campaign, Balkans United for Clean Air, that just ended, but where we have decided all together that we will not let the campaign end, but that we will transform into a network because there are so many other things that have to be dealt with when it comes to clean air, which is a per se regional topic. So today it is about the Engaged Democracy Initiative. Many of you have had the pleasure of Zooming with us over the last months. Um, we had uh, national meetings, we had uh, topic related meetings. Um, as I said, we want to build it together with you. We are not having predefined indicators and we are not looking for people that will help us fulfill our indicators. We are looking really for people that will help us create something that, that will have a purpose for, for the work of, of all of us. Uh, with this, we are building on existing regional solidarity that is there despite the decades that politicians have tried to ruin it. Uh, more, mainly it's shown in disaster times, floods, earthquakes, pandemics, and we are looking into how to find ways to transpose this solidarity into disaster-free times. Um, we have also seen that no process, no integration or perspective will make our societies automatically democratic. Not even if we become members of the club, it's, it's a self-going thing. We see that members have deep and severe democratic regressions. We are aware that this, what we are planning, is a really ambitious task uh, to, to map all of you as actors, to see what is it that you are doing, to see what is it where we can provide help and support. It's really a very time consuming um, task. It's a lot of coordination and a lot of patience also from you. So thank you for that. Uh, we at the European Fund for the Balkans are also currently developing and drafting a support mechanism for un unbureaucratic small scale financial support. So soon, I hope that there will also be news to be followed up. Um, the Engaged Democracy Initiative will only be successful if we, we manage really to meet your needs and to get together and to work together. Our plan is really to meet you in person, not only as small monitors on a screen, in September in Belgrade for when we have scheduled, but it's already the third time that we scheduled. So we really hope we will not have to postpone our Engaged Democracy Convention. So here I will stop. We have great speakers. We have not made much time, so I will not take more of it. Thank you very much once again. And Vedran, I give the floor to you. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Uh, welcome from my side. I am sitting in Vienna. Uh, Samir Beharic is in Bosnia. Gresa Hasa is in Albania. Iva Markovic uh, is in Serbia. Uh, and I see many uh, colleagues, dear colleagues, uh, uh, participants uh, watching us right now. Uh, so welcome uh, uh, on behalf of, of, of the Engaged Democracy Initiative. Uh, my name is Vedran Žihic and together with Gazela Puda Drashko, we will be moderating this kind of a small kickoff, uh, public kickoff event. Just one sentence at the beginning, Alexandra uh, already underlined the basic principles ideas of this kind of inclusive non hierarchical uh, initiative that we are building up here. Uh, but I wanted to underline, uh, uh, and this is what I took from Gressa Hassa's Twitter account. She, she, she has this kind of a nice uh, a quote, another world is possible. Uh, and, and, and just basically to underline that uh, the light uh, uh, of democracy, of justice, of equality, of freedom uh, has not failed uh, uh, in the region. So and I'm here alluding to the book of Ivan Kraster and Stephen Holmes, the light that has failed uh, partly in Eastern Europe when it comes to democracy liberalization. There are many challenges, but the point is also to look towards the places and spaces where we, do, where we do have and where we do see energies, fights, uh, struggles. Uh, and when, uh, when we look and just switch for a second from you know, all this debate that we have nowadays, non-paper of Slovenia and changing ethnic borders, Vucic is saying something, Dodik saying something. I mean, uh, just for a second, uh, imagine that this is not the world that we want to create 
that we uh, want to uh, do it uh, differently and that these energies are around. And that's uh, almost the perfect, uh, perfect uh, uh, way to, to uh, give the floor, give the Zoom floor. Uh, I mean, this is not, not a floor anymore, like small uh, baskets uh, on, on, on the screen. Uh, but to introduce just briefly our panelists today, uh, Samir Bekaric is uh, right now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in Yaitse. Uh, and when we uh, speak about uh, the notion of another world is possible and constant fight, uh, then you have it in, in Samir and his initiatives uh, in Bosnia. Uh, Gresa Hassa uh, is co-founder and chief editor of Shota uh, in Albania. Uh, putting a lot of emphasis, uh, and this is one of the, of the fundamental issues we use to claim that there will be no democratic revolution with, without, without feminist revolution uh, in the Western Balkans. And, and Gresta has put a lot of work into this kind of a grassroots uh, uh, gender, uh, female perspective on, on the development in the region. And last but not least, Eva Markovic. You see behind uh, uh, Eva, there are like those waves, Pravo na vodu. We have the right to clean water. Uh, and Eva uh, has been for a long time fighting from, for fresh air, fresh rivers, uh, engaged in different bottom-up grassroots initiatives. And this is one of the examples. I mean, looking also now what's happening in Serbia, and there is this kind of a new protests on the streets and, and a new sense of urgency, basically. Uh, Eva has been on top of it uh, for a long, long time. So uh, great to have you. Just one technical remark. Uh, uh, Towards the end, so we will uh, try to, I mean, this is a webinar, this is Zoom, but we will try to uh, uh, include you and your questions in the Q&A. So please, uh, any questions and comments that you have, uh, put it into the Q&A and Gazela Puda, Drashko and myself, so we will uh, take care that we bring it in uh, and, and have an interesting uh, and, and as much as it is possible interactive. Uh, discussion, but the real interaction will happen in Belgrade, hopefully by the mid of September at this big convention that we are planning. So, uh, without further ado, uh, Sami Beheric, take this Zoom to Yaitse. Uh, and, uh, and the question to you will be, uh, I mean, why is, I mean, we claimed in the title that the democratic change needs to come bottom up. Uh, mm -hmm. So why is it important? Uh, why is it necessary for change? And uh, if you have uh, one or two examples from your daily fight and struggle, uh, it will be great to share it with the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Vedran. Thank you very, very much, everyone. I would like to greet you with already traditional Zoom greeting. Do you hear me? Um, I'm, I'm calling in from Yaitse, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, this is a city where I was born and raised. Um, it, it's a city where um, I, I came back just uh, half a year ago, just to claim that this uh, brain circulation in Bosnia and Herzegovina and in the region is possible. Um, speaking about bottom-up engagement um, and, and examples that I have been um, engaged with, um, I would say that my, my whole experience has been um, absolutely shaped by my education by my education in primary and secondary school exactly here in the city of Yaitse in Bosnia and Herzegovina. For those who don't know, um, currently in Bosnia and Herzegovina now, we have around 56 ethnically segregated schools, which means that students who are of different ethnic backgrounds, in this case, Bosniaks, attend separate classes from their Croat peers. And I attended such a school. Um, and that, that this notion has totally shaped uh, my persona, it has shaped my experience, and it has shaped in a big, big glance my, my destiny, I would, I would, I'm free to say this. Um, throughout my experience, I have seen and I have witnessed that bottom-up engagement is maybe not the only way how to deal with issues on the ground, but it is one of the best ways how to do it. Uh, why? Because I have, through my experience, I have noticed that um, the best way of dealing with um, issues, problems, the most effectively we deal with them when they are, when the process of dealing with them is locally owned. This means when young people, usually I have worked for the last 10, more than 10 years with young people, trying to bring young people from different, seg from different segregated schools together through non-formal education, through non-formal action through youth exchanges, um, study sessions, study visits. 
Um, and I have seen that these young people who do not attend classes together, they work beautifully together when they are outside of their schools, outside of this um, formal education institutions. And this is, I would say, um, one of our defeats because we have allowed, not just in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but we have allowed in the whole Western Balkans to have a situation where we are bringing young people together from the Western Balkans to meet with each other on, on a neutral ground, somewhere far away, somewhere not in their local community. Um, and one of the best examples, not just that I have been working on, but, but like I would say not even nationally, but regionally was the most recent um, student uprising exactly in the city of Yate that happened in 2017, uh, uprising against um, segregation, ethnic segregation in education. For those who maybe didn't follow up the, 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 the back then the, the situation, there were more politicians who said, who said, okay, we are very happy with how the segregated schools um, you know, are going out for us, you know, the nationalist politicians. So they said, okay, why not segregating even more of them? So they tried to do it. They came to Yaita, they said, okay, we will segregate already integrated schools. And something beautiful has happened. Those young people who have been working together um, on a neutral ground, again, um, who came together, who met each other outside of these institutions, they started attending these integrated schools, high schools in Yaita, and they said, no, you will not segregate our integrated schools because they have met each other for years. They were best friends. Um, they went out to the streets, um, organized a series of protests. This was a prime example of bottom-up approach of having locally owned initiative, pushing it for more than a year. Parallel, parallel, um, parallel um, 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 real situation on the ground is that their parents, their teachers, um, their politicians, the politicians, their political representatives are telling them, it's not impossible for you to change anything. This is how it is. This is the status quo that you cannot change and that you should not be changing. So the bottom up approach teaches something else. It teaches especially young people that change throughout their action on the local ground, on the ground is possible and not only possible, it teaches them critical thinking. Critical thinking, something that we, something that does not exist in the formal education, um, in educational institutions in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and I'm sure to claim also in the, in the rest of the Western Balkans. In the moment when we have young people critically aware, first of all, of themselves, uh, of their family, of the society, of the political institutions, of the state institutions, um, um, in the environment where they, where they um, live, uh, where they cohabitate, so to speak, um, in that moment, we will have young people who will in 10, 15, 20 years become pillars of the societies in the Western Balkans. One day they will become ministers, foreign ministers, heads of states. And I think this is a long-term perspective um, and long-term potential that the bottom-up approach has not only on our environment, but also on the young people uh, and the generations who will be um, um, building up our societies uh, in the future. And that's why um, I'm, 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 I always, when I speak to young people calling for their um, activism on the ground, um, and very importantly, not listening to the authorities, including their own parents. Because I am afraid, and I will try to finish with this, I usually tell parents, close your ears when I say this, um, but our parents, uh, there, is, there is, it's not a generational gap. I think it's a gap, it's an ideological gap, it's, it, and it's a gap in thinking and in the way how we process and reason our reality. Because usually my mom, she told me, she taught me this. She said, Samir, don't rock the boat. Be good boy. You know, go to school, have good grades, you know, don't make waves and you will get a job. This may have been the case during the former Yugoslavia. It's not the case anymore. My mom was born and raised during the former Yugoslavia. She lived during the former Yugoslavia. Now we, do, we are missing this last link of the chain that we will get a job. Um, and this is also exactly the case why a lot of young people are being silenced and they are being passivized, if that word exists in English. They're not, I, don't, I don't like to say that, the, that young people are passive. They are, being, they are being made passive by the schools, by the parents, by the media, and by the system. In the moment when we have young people
critically organizing themselves um, and pushing boundaries, questioning their surrounding. In that, in that sense, we will have uh, excellent foundation for building democratic institutions. And I'm very, very glad to say that at least here um, in the local level, in Yates and Central Bosnia, we have, we have um, established that and gave a great example, not only to other young people attending segregated schools throughout uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also it's a, it's, it's a blueprint for other young people working hand in hand throughout the region, but also um, throughout Europe and throughout the world. And I think I will I will stop here. Thanks, thanks, Samir, very much. This is very productive use of uh, seven minutes <laughs> with many words, and but uh, many very meaningful words. And I think uh, uh, the, what you pointed out is very important for us also. This uh, uh, change, which is coming through the local initiatives, locally owned. Uh, this is very very important for all the initiative and I think it's important for people to understand how how we are going to proceed. I would not now uh, give floor to Eva, Eva Markovic. She is uh, involved in many initiatives and uh, uh, she has a lot of experience as an activist uh, uh, in Serbia and the region and I think it could be very useful for us to, to hear a little bit more from you, more on obstacles which you face in, in fighting the cause which you are fighting and how regional perspective can help you in this uh, in this uh, struggle hello everyone um, thank you for inviting me first of all um, uh, having all this experience that you mentioned uh, makes uh, answering to this question uh, easy because there are always a lot of obstacles but on the other hand what I want to offer today is uh, some kind of long, maybe broader perspective on the, the everyday obstacles that we that we see. As uh, of course uh, we live now in the pandemic, it's impossible to to bypass this and and ignore it. Uh, pandemic times are now uh, bringing us. Uh, to explore all the other ways of uh, approaching people, of connecting, of uh, building trust without physical contact, which is by my humble opinion almost impossible uh what what made uh, uh what made the, the trust between people is this uh, uh really direct contact in which you have communication which is spontaneous which is going on which is uh, uh, you know uh, meandering between different topics and then you share the values you do not share the values uh, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, communicating in, in uh, one direction. And pandemics is not only, it, it doesn't, um, it's not only that it's preventing everyone from moving everywhere, going in, in uh, different places or gathering of the local communities in the same place or going in the re around the region and sharing the, the experience, but it's also filtering who's moving and who's going and who will be the one. Uh, we had the example where in, in, uh, we, uh, we didn't want to go into, in example, villages uh, around Serbia, uh, being afraid that, that usually elderly population there uh, might be endangered by our, uh, you know, like very friendly arrival, but we may bring the the, the virus as well, and uh, we didn't want to do this in in this way. But we can also not organize webinar with them on on something that's locally bothering them. Uh, but then you see, an example, the the right wing, the extreme right, or the as I would call it, obscure, uh, uh, bizarre uh, right wing who doesn't believe in Corona, not having problems in going around talking with people, spreading their uh, their ideas. And also it's not just a cultural, so whether you are uh, you believe or not believe in Corona, it's also about the the class position so if you have the money to take the test which is expensive if you have the money you know to go around and not care if you will lose your job or whatever then you can communicate so this is one perspective of the pandemics another that i already mentioned is building trust so we lost as all the society i see it as a one society uh in in western balkans we lost trust in institutions but not just the state institutions we lost any belief in informal institutions as well 
So every time someone shows up raising, as Samir mentioned, like rocking the boat, raising the voice, we're always suspicious who is this person, whether this is something in our interest or whether there is hidden interest, etc. So we really, this lost in, in institutions, I also see it uh, uh, absolutely projected on informal institutions, on having a meeting, on uh, inviting people to do something, on, on just uh, fighting or, or uh, uh, asking for laws to be changed as well. Um, and finally, um, what, what's the big obstacle and what needs to be done and what I uh, think I'm working on uh, pretty much is this uh, idea of building affirmative narrative. So usually we're always defending something. We're always protecting. I'm from the environment sector, but I also know that it's defending the right to, uh, you know, uh, how, for households or water or health uh, uh, or, or whatever you, you have it, there, uh, there will always be this kind of defensive position from which you can hardly make, you know, th this ideal, the story, the narrative that someone will believe in and that will gather a broader uh, audience. So um, uh, I think that this is the next step, uh, especially for the environmental cause, that we have the, the, you know, the, the ideal and the story, how do we want things to look? And not only how do we defend this or that and, and, uh, and stay between these very particular uh, struggles. I will uh, stop here because of the time, but we can, we can maybe talk more um later uh, thank you so much eva uh, i mean like these three points and levels and layers the corona impact which is big and which is continuing and ongoing uh, then this very important point of trust how the loss of trust into institutions and politicians is transferred basically to the to the civic sector and this is a huge issue that we need to discuss and, and lastly i mean th th this is all about this initiative too i mean building an affirmative uh, narrative uh, the narrative uh, that i quoted from gresa hassa's uh, uh, twitter that, that another different western balkan southeastern europe but also europe altogether because these are like there are so many common issues uh, that this is uh, uh, possible. So over to you, Gressa, uh, uh, to Albania. Uh, uh, it would be great to, to get your perspective. Uh, I mean, you, you also are and have, have been uh, engaged in, in, in many initiatives bottom up. But as I said at the beginning in the introduction, you particularly uh, are engaged into the gender related uh, issues, women, question of women's solidarity. Uh, and we believe that this is very, very fundamental and important for the region. So what will be your take? Uh, and if you could give us also this perspective on women's solidarity on the regional level, as you see it, that would be amazing. So over to you, Gresa. Thank you, Vedran. Um, well, as we've been saying throughout this conversation until now, yes, another world is possible, but this world cannot be um, not feminist. So the only promise for us to go towards a towards an equal and just society that's like through feminism in my own eyes, at least. Uh, I come from um, a grassroots um, background, grassroots activism. I've been engaged with a, a grassroots student movement in Albania and also with workers' rights. But um, then I um, decided to fully engage with feminist activism because it happens that some of us are women and the world is totally different when you are a woman. Um, there cannot be radical social change without the involvement of women, also Roma and Egyptian, also LB, LGBTQI, because real change can only happen from bottom up and women are right there at the bottom. Um, since last year, what was brought to attention was the fact that women were the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic and they still are. Moreover, this entire social reproduction chain um, is based on women's unpaid la labor. Women have replaced the role of the state because our states have entirely failed us. For example, during lockdown, women were the ones taking care of the entire household, usually the typical patriarchal family. They were the ones doing the dishes. Um, they were the ones taking care of the children, of their husbands, of the elderly, of the sick, um, and so on. I mean, all, 
all while also trying to keep up with their work for the lucky ones who still had a job and who were still earning something. Why? Because our hospitals are in the worst condition ever. Our schools as well, kindergarten, kindergartners too. Elderly homes are almost invisible, at least in Albania. Um, and no social policies have really been pushed forward within these 30 years of the so-called democracy in Albania. Also, last year's statistics have shown that women were more likely to either get fired or to resign during the pandemic, during lockdown. Uh, and this was due to domestic work at home because the patriarchal perception towards women, which now liberal systems entirely exploit, is that holding the social burden on their shoulder is actually women's natural role, which is entirely bullshit. Now, imagine if all the women together who in countries like Albania also make more than 50% of the entire population stopped working all at once. At home, in shoe factories, in coal centers, in the oil refinery, at the mines, in the state and private institutions, everywhere. The system would entirely collapse. This is how crucial women's role is in the society. This is how powerful women are. But to arrive to the point where we all act together, we need to build st feminist structures of solidarity and common action. And um, these structures can only be built with intersectional grassroots feminism. Um, feminism holds the power of love, feminism holds the power of care, solidarity, social justice, and, and equality. Feminism is also able to bring down the walls of hate, like nationalism in, in the Balkans, this um, toxic root that has taken so many innocent lives through genocides in the last century. Um, you know, like the alienation of the other, the demonizing of the other due to their ethnic background or even sexual orientation and gender and gender identity. We have noticed that, for example, LGBTQI protests or other co collective feminist action have had the ability to gather all of us. Um, and I'm not just, I don't just mean all of us in Albania, but I mean all of us in the region you know, no matter if we are Albanians, Kosovar, Serbs, or Bosniaks, and so on. I mean, how can we further develop this? I mean, from this point on, um, I think through communication. Communication is the first step to try to approach the other, to try to understand each other. Um, this is why for grassroots feminists like myself and my friend Yuri Kuchi, who is also the co-founder of the Shota magazine, we decided to take this first step to create an easily and free feminist platform where we can start by setting a feminist discourse and communicating with each other. And from this point on, taking common actions together. Um, the whole idea behind um, Shota, this first progressive feminist magazine in Albania, it's, yeah, just this. Settle a healthy feminist discourse and try to reach each other and then turn our idea for a better word, world for another world into praxis. Um, I can go on forever if we know, you know about like feminism or grassroots initiatives, but like I'm going to stop here and nice. whoever has any questions. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Greta. This is very important. I think that we frequently, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say forget, but we do not emphasize so much the role of women and it's really important and uh, it could be much more important than it is for the moment. I wanted to ask you, I mean, uh, you mentioned that we need to work together and Eva also mentioned uh, at some point uh, uh, that uh, things need to be done uh, basically uh, with other people. And uh, the, my question is, if, if we have in mind that what you said, Eva, that there is no trust and you still need to work with other people and not only that there is no institutional trust there is also lack of interpersonal trust because obviously it's very hard for also those people who get engaged to explain even to their uh, closest surrounding that they have good intentions which is obviously important for people to to trust you uh, but always there is something that uh, you know there are some other intentions involved if you are stepping into the politics and everything is politics basically how to uh, how to cross this line and how to work with other groups initiatives people uh, which actors we need to take into the fight basically in order to uh, make citizens more uh, uh, active make them more give them more voice basically we can start from Eva because I obviously mentioned you but uh, this is the question for all of three of you I'm not sure 
I'm not, I'm still uh, researching this and I'm still uh, working on the answer. Uh, how to bypass is, is really hard, but I don't see the other way instead of trial and error. Uh, I mean, just accepting uh, the, the, the errors is, is fine and, and then continuing in some other model. Um, but I think that, that maybe um, I, I, now maybe I'm too um, involved in all of this from the inside. So, so I don't see that the citizens are not, not active. I see them as very, very active. The thing is that the structure is lacking. So they, are, they want to do something, they don't know how to do it. Um, and then uh, what might be of help is uh, uh, the, the, the organizations that are already established, I would say, the organizations that have uh, the expertise and the knowledge and know how not only in, in a specific topic, but also in organizing things. The, the pure logistic, I would say, is preventing a lot of very good uh, initiatives from from developing. Um, so uh, uh, just showing the, the support to them as a, as a you know, big organ, uh, organization of civil society uh, is very, very important. And I see it uh, actually happening on, on a smaller scale um, around Serbia. I also know uh, friends from Montenegro and from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina having uh, the same uh, the same cooperation with big NGOs, uh, having the knowledge, cooperating with the local initiatives around the environmental uh, topics. Um, um, the other thing is, uh, uh, again, uh, breaking through this kind of civil society stigma. Um, uh, having the, the, the NGOs as something that's uh, almost uh, turning into business sector or having something, uh, some kind of accusations about uh, foreign mercenaries, etc. Et just, uh, um, uh, you know, just bypassing all of this and leaving it aside, ignoring it as much as possible and doing what you know is the, the, the what, what you can do in a, in a local community. And again connecting connecting between the same i would say like same level of organization initiatives uh, uh women from krushica are inspiring the entire world not just the region they're really inspiring the entire world um people from from uh, kosovo from shara who are uh, multi-ethnically uh, 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 defending uh, uh, the rivers from dams, they're uh, Serbs, Albanians, and others. They, they are they are also a very very good example. So connecting uh, between the states, but also uh, connecting between the topics. We had the example that the this Saturday protest, the, the big protest uh, uh, that was uh, called the uh, um, environment um, ecological uprising, uh, was uh, um, I think it was that big because of the cooperation, because of the process that was before that, and it was unification of the demands of uh, 70 uh, different organizations and also very importantly support given to the freelancers and to the uh, you know these uh, precarious workers that are that are having totally maybe different idea but this cooperation made it uh, i would say not only um gave it not only the credibility of uh, of a large number of people and supporters but also gave it uh, a, a much better quality if you go into different sectors and if you check your idea within different you know different other interests then you get the the quality idea and that's that's something i i think should go on as a practice uh, everywhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah, there is also one question which I think you can address, and that, uh, that is uh, to what extent are feminist values enacted in, uh, in this case, student educational advocacy, but I would say uh, in general, how much feminist values can you see uh, among your fellow, let's say, uh, fighters in, for the cause? Well, I should admit that, you know, we're starting from the scratch here. Mm -hmm. This is a very patriarchal society and you have patri patriarchy rooted in every level of the society, starting from the streets, from civil actors to institutional level to governmental level. Um, for example, our prime minister, I think, is a prototype of the 
typical patriarchal leader, Edi Rama, of course, and all the others, you know, accompanying him. Um, so it is very difficult, it is very hard, but you know, somebody must take the first step. I mean, you cannot wait, nobody's gonna grant you the rights, nobody's gonna grant you the freedom. And this is also a struggle within the left-wing movements or left-wing groups. Uh, within the country, because there are those who think that, you know what, we have more important things to do, like, uh, we're going to just deal with, um, for example, you know, this, like, workers revolution, which is, like, totally fine, you, you know, but, like, workers, how are women excluded from that, or, you know, how is it possible that, like, feminism and all these struggles are seen as a part, because I think that feminism is an integrated part in uh, every social circle in this society, in everything that we do. So it's very hard, absolutely. But uh, again, I repeat, you know, we cannot, we cannot wait for somebody or something to grant us the freedom because that's not how things work. So we have to do things ourselves. And uh, yeah, we started from the scratch. And um, since um, the commentator was mentioning students, um, when we were at, uh, and when I say we, I mean also other feminist activists, part of the student movement in Albania, for example. When we were part of the student movement, um, we started for the first time articulating um, the student struggle and from a feminist perspective, because this neoliberal law in higher education that was affecting students, it affected specifically female students more than others, because uh, a young student who comes from a village or from a poor city in Albania, if she doesn't go to university, when university here is also, you know, an instrument or a way for them to liberate themselves or to become independent. So if she doesn't have access to that due to poor economy, uh, then she will have to face two choices. Either her patriarchal family will marry her off, possibly to a man who's, who's older than her, or, you know, she will work in some shoe factory for less than 100 euros per month. And, you know, like slavery, like modern slavery will continue, you know, to reproduce itself from, you know, from the generation of their moms, for example, to the daughters. And that's just not okay. So we've started bit by bit, you know, trying to integrate this feminist discourse within different causes because it is necessary for everybody to understand that there cannot be a conversation or a debate of any kind with women being excluded from it. We are part of this society. We are smart, we are strong, we have a voice. So, you know, we demand to be respected and uh, to be included. This is not something that we're gonna negotiate. We cannot negotiate our existence. We cannot negotiate our basics, basic rights because Despite this, you know, I mean, women in, in societies like Albania and entirely in the Balkans, you know, I mean, they are exploited and oppressed at all the levels of the society, as women, as workers, wherever they breathe, in the streets, in institutions, everywhere, in the public space, you know, in Albania, for example, like the public space, it's considered a man's space, you know, it's just a bunch of patriarchal men, most probably at a certain age, who think that they own the space there, and who, you know, who tell you that, hey, if you allow you to speak, then you're going to speak. If not, I mean, this is not how th things should work. Um, I mean, women, women are the crucial, a crucial part of this society, and they hold the entire society on their shoulders. So, Yes, but it's hard. It's very, very hard. But it's not. Um, it's not undoable. You know, it is difficult, but um, it's difficult. But it can be done. Um, I mean, yes. our entire history shows us that things. Um, I mean, you don't do not win in an easy way, and uh, the grassroots activism is exactly what also you know what also shows shows the, uh, that's, that shows this to us as well. You know, it's a, it's a hard work, you know, to go every day, to talk to people, to knock on every door, to try to convince people, mainly through the force of argument. Unlike the political parties, for example, who buy people with money, we don't have money. We, I mean, our power lies only in our words and in the solidarity we have with each other. And uh, just like Eva mentioned earlier, there is this mistrust generally in our societies, not just towards the institutions, but also towards each other. Right now at the moment in Albania, 
uh, this is one of the main conversations that's happening because there was a breach of data from our government through this uh, governmental portal eAlbania, where all of our data, all, all, all of our personal data is being used now for the elections of 2021. And I was just thinking, you know, you have like a miss, you are just surrounded by mistrust. People are afraid to talk to each other. People are afraid to just to give this small basic trust to each other, to just start a conversation. I mean, how can we, how can this be changed? Because this is another level. This is, you know, this is an, in an emotional level. How can you make people hear you and trust you and come, you know, work together with you? Um, I don't know, but you just gotta got give it a try and you gotta leave it to time, you know? I think that consistency will maybe bring us where we want to go. <laughs> Yes, you made uh, several very important points. Consistency, persistence also, and always knowing where, where you are heading to. I think this is really important. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, freedom is to be fought for all the time. So we can never uh, get the full freedom. We always need to fight for it. And in that sense, Samir, <laughs> uh, you can tell us also uh, with whom do you cooperate? Who is uh, Who are the actors which can help you, which you need to address when you are engaging in society? Uh, uh, how relevant for you is regional experience? And also there is one question for you, which I think you can address briefly from Pierre Mirel, uh, who is asking what happened with the implementation of the judgment of the tribunal who said the schools should be abolished, uh, uh, segregated schools. So can you give us a little bit more, of, let's say closing I, overview, and then I'm going to- I, I, can, I can first in a very short words uh, answer mm -hmm. Mr. Mirel's uh, question, nothing happened. <laughs> So the, 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 the judgment is there, the verdict uh, is there. It is um, discrimination to segregate, of course, students, you know, um, based on, based on ethnic, ethnic background. Uh, but of course, the, um, the um, uh, politicians didn't find this enough uh, to implement the judgment, to implement the verdict and, and, to, and, to, bring, and to bring children together, at least to abolish the currently existing uh, segregated schools. And this is not only the problem, there are also currently some voices coming outside of the Western Balkans from Germany. It was uh, really recently, like a month and a half ago, two months ago, that they were like, um, there was a, in Süddeutsche Zeitung, a pretty much uh, renowned German newspaper. There was a journalist claiming that, um, you know, um, uh, two schools under one roof are also something liberal, a liberal model where parents and students can actually choose where to send uh, their child, you know, and this is a nothing but a talking point of, you know, nationalist politicians who have brought us in, in the situation where we are currently now. When it comes to when it comes to cooperation, um, also again, 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 linking, linking, linking my experience, we would have never um, won uh, in this particular case when it comes to segregated schools without building alliances and networks with first and foremost. Um, international community um, here in Bosnia and Herzegovina and with the media. Uh, in my experience, media has served as a very strong supporter of uh, the causes of uh, non-governmental organizations in case when the NGOs are able and they have knowledge and skills to harness and to use the media as their ally. Because from the media, the media spillover effect can achieve a lot in bringing uh, on their side um, uh, local politicians, uh, foreign ambassadors, international actors, stakeholders, uh, but also bringing on our own side the general, the general public. And exactly because of that fact, because we have seen that grassroots activists lack um, skills, uh, sometimes even basic skills on how to organize, how to build a campaign, um, how to work together, how to link with other grassroots um, initiatives, just in 10 days, um, together with, uh, with a friend of mine, um, we have we got a grant, small grant from, from UNDP, and we will uh, bring 15 environmental activists here in Yaitse together to work together on um, organizing, community organizing, organizing campaigns and fight, fighting shady investors coming into our rivers, um, destroying natural habitat and destroying basically the resources, the natural resources, which are ours at the end of the day. And we were inspired by this uh, just because of the fact just four months ago here in Yaitse, 
300 meters away from beautiful, unique Yaitse waterfall, the only waterfall in the world situ situated in the city center. Can you imagine a group of investors came to build not one, but two small power plants just 200 meters away from the from the waterfall. Um, we protested, um, collected signatures, and we collected more signatures in this petition, more signatures than the mayor of Yaitse won votes during uh, the last local elections. And this was a very strong message um, to all of the politicians trying to get in the same bed with um, investors trying to um, trying to um, 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 basically steal uh, our resources and get rich um, out of out of water. So um, we will bring those young people together, give them necessary skills and tools, and basically uh, give them our experience um, on how they can um, connect with others easily and make their strong make their case stronger and their actions actually um, successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank, thanks a lot. Uh, we had one comment here, but which I would like to address. I won't uh, pose any question. Uh, that is about liberal democracy. And Samir, you mentioned the uh, liberal model uh, in your uh, words now. I don't think that we need to fall into this trap to confront critical thinking to any kind of democracy. I think it's uh, 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 that there is understanding, I think, and there is a common understanding and baseline among all of us that we need to give a voice to citizens and make them decide. The question is how they uh, acquire uh, information and skills to decide in their own uh, interests. That is a question and that is the key, key question of uh, building a good society in a way and building good democracy because I don't really think that it's possible to have a good society without democracy, without participants who are uh, taking decisions. So I don't think that the role model of of uh, uh, North, uh, uh, North Korea can be in any kind uh, a role model for anything, but uh, I just wanted to address this uh, comment here in the, in the uh, Q&A. I would like to ask you the final question, and that is we are heading now, hopefully, really hopefully, we are going to have this convention in September. We have the uh, uh, rest of the spring and the summer ahead of us. Uh, what would be your message to, uh, to activists in the region? What should be basically uh, uh, done? How, what is from your personal experience, what is the message which you could send to them in order to help them to feel, let's say, empowered? Because mo most often the activists uh, feel uh, drained from the fight. Uh, there is like also pessimists around. A pessimist is a good. In a way, there is distrust to our institutions, which is productive. But pessimist as such, uh, as a life pessimist, is not good. So what is the message which you can send to them and to all of us, basically, uh, to continue struggling for better society here? Um, I can start, if that's OK. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, I'd like to say that um, the system works in such a way to make you feel depressed, lonely, alone, and totally pessimistic. And grassroots activists are very often confronted with, with this huge machine that goes against them. I mean, we are arrested, we are put um, to trials, we are interrogated, uh, you know, some of us have faced jail, uh, we are threatened constantly, and uh, we have, you know, we're facing difficulties in our workplace, uh, or economic difficulties, or other personal issues also in our personal life, and we are facing all of this now, uh, you know, while living in a global pandemic, and also facing sickness and constant insecurity. So, you know, there are many moments when we may feel insecure or when we may feel totally drained or burned out and at the brink of giving up. Uh, and I think that that's exactly the point. Uh, that's exactly the turning point, the point where we are not uh, supposed to do that. Because at the moment where that we think that we are alone and, you know, this, is, this fight doesn't matter, you know, it's like fighting, fighting windmills. Um, that's 
where it matters because we are not alone. We are not the only ones feeling like that. We are not the only ones facing these difficulties. There are so many like us out there. I think it's so empowering to see in Albania, uh, in a state which is 100% captured by mafia in power, and in politics and in the businesses to see the everyday people, you know, in, in different cities or villages not giving in to this evil and, you know, just working and trying to do everything with dignity just so that, you know, they do not give in to this evil power and, you know, not to um, completely be submissive towards that. I think this is inspiring. I think this is motivating. I mean, it's very hard at the end of the day, uh, it would be very arrogant to tell people, you know, what to do or what not, or not, not to do. There are people that at a certain point that just simply cannot go on with this. And that's completely fine. But for the rest of us who can, I, uh, I think that, you know, the law, the road is very long. It's very difficult. It has many challenges. And this is a process, you know, it's a process. The change is a process. It's not that we're just gonna arrive at the final point just like that. The process is the change. And this change can only happen if we trust each other a little bit more and if we continue to um, support each other in solidarity. And it's very important to create these safe spaces where we can also talk and we can also complain at the end of the day because we are not heroes. It's I think it's very wrong to treat activists and especially grassroots activists as the heroes who are gonna save the world because that's a lot of pressure to all of us. It was the same thing happening with the doctors when the pandemic started, you know, treating doctors as heroes. The, and, you know, expecting from doctors to do everything to sacrifice themselves for us. But doctors are people, they are workers who, you know, do not get paid enough, who struggle economically and who struggle in all the ways. And I think that the least we can do is show our support and collectively, you know, try to help each other and try to help um, also the society where we want to live at the end of the day. Thanks a lot, Agressa. Samir, I see yeah, that you are you. heading to, to unmute myself. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mean, Gresa had several really ex excellent points, and it is it is really true. We cannot um, uh, recommend anyone what to do because we do not know what other people have fought already and how has this taken toll on them. Because I have friends who have um, they have they they are currently in a burnout. So currently they are not activists anymore, you know, and you cannot tell them, oh, you know, look, be positive, you know, and look, look, like, look at on a, on a bright perspective. So we need to respect that. And we also need to take care about something that we in the activist circles usually do not do neglect often and which is which is um, mental health. Uh, mental health of, of um, activists. I mean, it should it is neglected in general, not just in activist circle, but in general. But especially, you know, in the circles where people are fighting windmills, I do try. I do. I do believe windmills can be, you know, uh, tear down if if the wind is strong enough. But until we reach that point, there might some of us might suffer some consequences. So I can only speak about myself. What I do if I feel if I um, lack optimism, or for example, if some Someone tells me, oh no, that's not, it's not impossible. I try to point out at those initiatives that have worked, um, at the um, 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 protests that have worked, um, optimistically, like in the best way, those that I took part in. So I know from my own experience, it's possible. Um, I know it was possible to, to, to uh, keep schools uh, um, integrated. I know it's possible to chase away um, investors um, from, from our rivers, you know. Um, I try to take this, to, to, to take this um, um, optimism and, and positive examples from my colleagues and friends from the local community, from my, my close circles. But we need to be there at all times for those people, for the colleagues who, who um, uh, for this or that reason, lack optimism. And I don't think the, being, being optimistic is always, um, always good because it leaves us uh, vulnerable uh, for, for, for that sense. Uh, but we really need to um, cater to each other's feelings in a, in, a, in a given situation, because this is the only way how we can, um, in, a, in, a, in a systemic way, support each other within our um, activist circles, and then go to, go to um, at least to, to, to visit um, professionals that can deal with, um, you know, burnout, with stress, 
uh, and then later, um, God forbid, also with with some with some um, um, physical general um, health um, conditions, which can occur if we neglect uh, mental health um, mental health issues. Thanks a lot, Samir. This is really important point, and especially having in mind that in general this is very much neglected topic in our region, and even you know you know people want to hide these things here. That's the culture, Eva. I, um, I I will try. I mean, I support and I, I can just uh, agree with everyone uh, Gres and Samir said already. Uh, I will try not to sound like a um, new age uh, self-help uh, booklet, but uh, your best is really good enough. Um, everyone are doing their best. I, am, I, I haven't seen a person who's in the activism who's... Um, you know, taking this for uh, half an hour a day, being an activist, and then the rest of the day doing, a, uh, you know, absolutely relaxed uh, uh, day job and having time with family. We are all in, I think, in average on, uh, on in, in a burnout process some slower, some, some faster. Uh, I wake up every mo morning with uh, what, what's what's next uh, what's what's now what's tomorrow i i really can't relax five minutes a day without thinking what will happen um but i also know that that really everyone contribution is really important and we should really respect everyone who can contribute this half an hour a day or 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 uh, uh you know 15 hours a day everyone are welcome to contribute and no one should be excluded uh, regardless of their uh, role. You can be a leader, you can be uh, uh, someone taking minutes, you can, you can, you know, make a few phone calls uh, and, and it's really uh, good enough and we're all thankful for the contribution, however, however you do it. Um, uh, of course, uh, just, uh, you know, shake hands with, with people who want to help you. Uh, don't uh, you know, discard this. No one can can do everything on their own. Uh, if it's someone from from academia, if it's someone from uh, your friends, if, or if if it's someone from the other organization, uh, use every help you can you can you can get. Um, maybe the, 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 for now, I, I think we we all now had to go into this personal um, perspective, but it is really important because. Uh, all the struggle depend on the people and on, on the persons who are who are there. Thanks, Lativa. I think this was also really important, uh, and uh, this shows also the, the kind of democratic character character of the movements of the local initiatives which we were working with uh, uh, within this engaged democracy initiatives and this is the root for changing the culture political culture i mean if people who are trying to bring a change understand fully how important is each person to be uh, fully uh, uh, acknowledged in their efforts i think this is really good good part uh, there is a lot of comments which are praising you guys. I think you were brilliant. You are brilliant in general, but also today you were brilliant. I just want to end this discussion because we are just almost in, in time, in one hour, with a comment on a question from Neven Nazaric. What is the value of regional cooperation for pursuing local goals? I think you, you got a lot of impression from the answers uh, of the comments of our panelists, but also I think that through this process, which lasted for, I think, almost uh, six months now uh, in Engage Democracy Initiatives, we got one very important thing, and this is uh, this kind of event, and also uh, uh, meetings and exchange on the regional basis between local initiatives shows that you are not alone that there is a successful case somewhere where you can learn from and also uh, that you can learn how they did it. So there is some model which you can maybe uh, try, maybe it's trial and error, we don't know, but there is, uh, there is this feeling that there are other people who are doing the same things which you are doing in your local community and this connection between them is something which is really valuable on the regional basis, especially because we share a lot of uh, heritage, uh, culture, and everything, this can be really helpful. And with these words, if Vedran wants to add something, no, 
I'm thanking you all for, especially the panelists for their great uh, uh, remar remarks and words. And thank you all who attend this session. I think you will have a chance to follow further what, uh, what is happening within Engage Democracy Initiatives and hopefully we'll, we'll see you all in live with the touch with everything uh, in September. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.